Let's see how the share market finished up today. Local market, it dived at the open, losing about 0.6%. But then it made a comeback in the afternoon. You can see tech stocks and telcos were the top performers, material sector and the banks fell. Market actually finished up by 0.1%. Top performers today included the online bookie points bet, synthetic skin maker Polynovo, which reported an unexpected increase in revenue during August, and the enterprise software business Technology One lifted 4%. And that was due to a broker upgrade. Other tops included the gold miner, St. Barbara. Actually, looks like it may have just finished flat in after hours trading. Uh, coal miner, Whitehaven. And the electricity generator, AGL, was up 3%. Losing value today included the machine learning stock, Appen, toll road operator, Atlas Arteria, and the diversified miner, Pilbara Minerals. Well, Treasurer Jim Chalmers today released the 252-page employment white paper, which includes 31 long-term directions and nine immediate actions designed to improve Australia's workforce and address labour shortages. Here's the Treasurer. We want to make sure that the sunlight of opportunity rep, uh, reaches every single corner of this country, and that means providing the opportunities. Uh, and that's why this uh, employment white paper, above all else, uh, is providing great opportunities to people and providing great workers to employers so that we can all prosper together. Well, joining me now on the set is Warren Hogan, Economic Advisor to Judo Bank. Warren, look, the unemployment rate in Australia, it's at 3.7%. So how do we create more jobs in the economy and improve the employment market further than it already is? Yeah, hi, Ed. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, look, it's a big task and it really is a task for the government and state governments. And this report, I think, is a bit of a blueprint. It's not up to monetary policy. Monetary policy has clearly done everything it can to stimulate the economy. And as you said, at the moment, we're running an unemployment rate well below what is regarded as full employment, yeah. which is 4%. That's a controversial topic of late. Um, and part of the objective, I think, of this paper and of, of, of the policy sort of discussions around it is going to be, can we get that considered full employment level down? And another important element is there's a lot of people who aren't measured as unemployed, right. uh, such as disabled or retired or what have you. And, you know, do they want work? Can they get into the workforce? So, look, this is a really important starting point, but it is just that, a starting point. And I think the government's, uh, you know, headed in the right direction. There's another issue today for monetary policy. SEEK's employment data shows wages growth has increased 4% for more than six weeks in a row. I believe that's above the RBA's forecast. So is this going you know, to add to inflationary pressure? Yeah, look, I think it, this is the, the here and now when it comes to the labour market, and that is that the unemployment rate is at 3.7. Full employment, we think, in the current economic sort of environment is around 4 or 4.5, i.e. we're creating upward pressure on wages. The SEEK numbers, which had been pretty... Pretty stable at around 4%, just under, similar to the wage price index for a little while now, are now starting to pick up again. And I think this is the issue. It's not that Australia's wage pressures aren't coming through and heading upwards. It's just that it's happening gradually because we've got a very regulated uh, labour market. So I think this is a worry for the RBA. Um, and it puts their forecast of a peak growth of wages at 4% under some question mark. Now, we've got a chart we can put up here showing output and new orders. This is from last week. Um, but what is this chart? Oh, it's on the screen now. What's this showing us here? So this is the flash PMI for um, September. It came out, the Judo Bank PMI. It's one of or global suite of indicators. It just shows you, though, the last data after four months of slowing, we're now seeing a pickup, particularly in the services sector. And this is critical for the Reserve Bank at the moment. They need the economy to slow. They need inflation pressure to continue to come off if rates are to stay where they are. I mean, this talk about rate cuts is way too premature. The issue right now is whether or not we're going to get away with a 4.1% peak cash rate. And this data, along with a whole run of data in the last few weeks, is suggesting the RBA's job is not done yet. Now, this week, there's some big economic news coming out. We've got the monthly inflation indicator for August. Now, I just looked at Bloomberg's prediction. They're expecting inflation could lift from 4.9% up to 5.2% during August. Mm. I mean, how big a worry is this for the new governor of the RBA, Michelle Bullock? Yeah, well, she's come in and, as I was alluding to, just... There's work to be done. Uh, the economy is not slowing quick enough, and this is highlighting, and I think the August figures will show, inflation's probably not coming down enough. We know that the oil price and record petrol prices here are going to play a role in terms of pushing headline inflation up. That doesn't help, but that's not the real issue. The real issue is the underlying core inflation pulse. That needs to be coming right down towards 4% by the end of the year. We're going to get a better insight into that with these 
August indicator on Wednesday, but I think it's the Q3 numbers at the end of October that are really important for inflation. Yeah, this monthly numbers, they are a bit volatile, mm -hmm. but I think the APS is getting better and better each month at, at putting out those figures. And it seems like the RBA and lots of economists do take those monthly figures pretty seriously now. Oh, very much. And there's genuine information in there. And we got a, a softer number in July, and that, that was a bit of a surprise to me. This number is very important. I mean, enough things start building and pointing to the need for more another rate hike, you know, is this going to tip them over the edge, retail sales later in the week? They guess she's got her first meeting, Governor Bullock, her first meeting next week. I don't think anyone's expecting it to hike rates, but that's where we're headed in that direction. Yeah, retail sales on Thursday. I mean, how has consumer spending been holding up? In nominal terms, that is the value of it, it's basically still sort of growing slowly. It had a big step down at the end of last year and it's actually going OK. Because of inflation, that means real retail sales are falling a little bit. But population growth and the fact that we've still got job creation, employment still growing, is keeping a floor under consumer spending. These numbers and every month is going to be critical because, as I said, the RBA needs the economy to slow and consumer spending is a critical part of that. So far, the evidence is that consumers are actually hanging in there pretty well through winter. This will give us some insight into the latest, uh, into the August numbers. So can we still get to that soft landing? I think we can get a soft landing. I just think it increasingly looks like the soft landing is going to require another one or two rate hikes before the end of this year. The worst thing we can do is just think we've got the job done and then come out of summer holidays into 2024 and realise the economy's picking up, inflation's not going to its target, and then the RBA has to take the cash rate up to where the US is at 5.5%. That will not result in a soft landing. So I think a soft landing is still the main view, but another rate hike is, is probably required. Warren Hogan, thanks for your time. Thanks, Ed.